<laughs> Semiconductors are materials that can carry greater currents than insulators like plastics, but smaller currents than conductors like metal wire. They have various cool and unusual electronic properties which make them perfect for low power devices like computer chips. For example, the current that goes through them can be increased and decreased very easily, which makes them very useful in various applications. They are sort of like conductors, but not exactly. They're semiconductors. Now, silicon is the most commonly used semiconductor material, and it's also the second most common element in the Earth's crust. It's found in and harvested from sand, but it's also in rocks and can even be grown in a lab. The silicon atom has four valence electrons, and the silicon crystal is made up of cubes that have this weird shape. Now, I cannot draw that, and so for the sake of convenience, I will use a two-dimensional grid to represent the structure of the silicon crystal. Here we have a silicon crystal. If energy is added, for example a photon can hit a silicon electron, the electron may get enough energy to break its bonds and actually leave the atom completely. In the bond where the electron used to be, there is now an empty space. That spot on the silicon atom now has a positive charge and other electrons are attracted to it. Every time an electron leaves its spot to fill the empty space, it itself leaves an empty space back where it was before. If we apply a charge, we can see that although all the electrons are attracted to the positive, only the ones by the hole can move closer. And so, although we obviously see that it is the electrons that are moving, it's much easier to think of a hole as a carrier of positive charge, rather than keep track of millions of electrons as they move around through a bunch of empty spaces. And so, although a hole is just an empty space, we treat it like its own particle. It has no mass because it's just the absence of an electron, but we talk about it like a positive charge carrier. And of course, it occupies space inside the crystal. In a crystal of pure silicon, there is an equal amount of both holes and free electrons. But if we add other atoms to the crystal, we can change the amounts of both holes and electrons. A common element to add to silicon is boron. Unlike silicon, boron only has three valence electrons. This is enough for it to fit into the crystal structure and bond with three silicon atoms. The covalent bond with the fourth silicon atom consists of a silicon electron and a hole because boron just doesn't have another valence electron to put there. And so, by doping the silicon crystal with boron, we have added a hole, a positive charge carrier, without adding any electrons. Another common dopant for silicon is the element phosphorus. Unlike silicon, phosphorus has five valence electrons. Just like boron, phosphorus fits into the silicon crystal. This time, though, the phosphorus bonds with all four silicon atoms around it and still has one valence electron left over. This electron is not bonded and only needs a little bit of energy to leave the phosphorus atom altogether. So, by doping the silicon crystal with boron, we added an extra positive charge carrier, a hole. And by doping the silicon crystal with phosphorus, we added an extra negative charge carrier, an electron. Silicon crystals with extra holes are called p-type silicon, p for positive, and silicon crystals with extra electrons are called n-type, n for negative. Now, this is extremely important for you to understand. Even though there are extra holes and extra electrons, the p-type and n-type crystals, overall, have neutral charges. In terms of the crystal, the phosphorus electron is free because it doesn't fit into the crystal structure, and the boron hole is free because it opens a space in the crystal structure. But in terms of the individual atoms, the crystal has a neutral charge. Boron has less electrons than silicon, but also less protons, and so overall the atom has a neutral charge. And phosphorus has more electrons than silicon, but also more protons, so it balances out too. And you might be asking yourself right now, So what? Why is this important? Okay, I'll tell you. Jeez, don't yell. P-type and N-type doping have various practical applications, but one of the most basic and common ones is the P-N junction, which is found in pretty much every modern electronic device, including whatever you're watching this video on. I'll try to give you a basic, conceptual understanding of it. 
Now, its name already tells you the basic idea of a PN junction. It is the junction between a P-type and an N-type semiconductor. Let's use the example of silicon once again, because after all, it's currently the most commonly used semiconductor material. So, imagine that you have a P-type crystal, doped with boron, with extra positively charged holes on one side, and an N-type crystal, doped with phosphors, with extra negatively charged electrons on the other side. And you basically just put one by the other so that they touch. And what happens? Remember, both crystals are neutral, but they simply have freely moving negative electrons and positive holes. At the border between p-type and n-type, the extra electrons from the n-type silicon jump over into the holes in the p-type silicon and fill those holes. Because of this, a depletion region forms and creates a barrier between the two crystals. There is a layer of p-type silicon that now has extra electrons filling its holes. Remember, this area used to be neutrally charged. Now the electrons make this area have a negative charge. On the other side, a layer of n-type silicon just had its electrons leave. Remember, this also used to be neutrally charged. Now the lack of electrons makes this area have a positive charge. The layer of atoms at the border is now ionized and is depleted of charge carriers. This prevents any current from flowing. You can see why the PN junction is useful when we attach it to a circuit. Alright, let's put the negative side on the left and the positive side on the right. The negative side adds electrons to the P-type silicon. These first electrons want to cross the depletion region, but they're repelled by the extra electrons already there. They stop and then they drop into the holes created by boron and cancel them out. The boron atoms become negatively charged because of the extra electrons. This widens the depletion region and repels even more electrons, completely stopping any current from flowing. On the other side, positive holes are added to n-type silicon. Just like the electrons, the holes want to cross the barrier, but are repelled by the positive side of the depletion region. They stop, replace the electrons, and make these atoms positively charged. This widens the depletion region and repels even more holes, completely stopping any current from flowing. Alright, so that obviously didn't work. There wasn't any current. Okay, how about we try flipping the circuit? We'll attach the positive side to the p-type silicon and the negative side to the n-type silicon. This time the negative side adds electrons to the n-type silicon. The n-type silicon now has a massive excess of electrons, which are all attracted to the massive number of holes in the depletion region. So they come to those holes, and they drop down into them, and they cancel them out. The depletion region gets smaller and might almost disappear if there are enough electrons coming through at once. Meanwhile, the positive side adds holes to the p-type silicon. The p-type crystal now has a massive excess of holes, which are all attracted to the massive number of electrons in the depletion region. So the extra holes come to the electrons, and the electrons hop over from their previously neutral atoms to the extra positive holes and cancel them out instead. The electrons are sucked out, the depletion region gets smaller and might almost disappear with a large enough current. So we see that in a PN junction, Electric current flows in one direction, but doesn't flow in the other. The PN junction creates a diode, a device which only allows the current to flow in one direction. These are very useful in turning alternating current that goes back and forth into direct current that only goes in one direction, and powers all of our electronics. The PN junction is also a key element of logic circuits in all our computers, phones, calculators, digital watches, TVs, you name it. Essentially, the age of technology is powered by semiconductors, holes, doping, and PN junction diodes. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And I truly hope you enjoyed this video and learned some new and interesting concepts and ideas that you can apply to your life in the near future. Goodbye and have fun!